This is Volusia Today, a public information radio program brought to you by the County of Volusia. Good morning and welcome to Volusia Today. I'm David Hunt with Volusia County Community Information. Thank you so much for tuning in this morning. Volusia Today is made possible by our sponsors, the Daytona Beach International Airport, the Ocean Center, Volusia Recycles, and Votran Public Transportation. So we have a lot going on in the county. I think one of the uh, most pertinent things going on, the, the tropics are super active right now. There is a disaster supply sales tax holiday going on August 26th through September 8th. If you haven't gotten your supplies yet, you still have time. This weekend's probably a great opportunity to go out, go out and do that. That's going to be the generator. That's going to be the flashlight. That's going to be the batteries. Um, definitely take advantage of that. Uh, it's a great opportunity to, to save a little bit of money. Um, some other updates on the on the beach and coastal front. Um, there is a there's a ban against front elevated trucks on the beach uh, that went into place. Um, so just that's something that probably everybody needs to be aware of. Those are those are not allowed on the beach now. Um, and then we also have a county council special meeting on sunsetting the communications tax, 4 p.m. Wednesday, August 30th in the county council chambers. Um, still beautiful out. School just started. We hope everybody had a, a great start to the school year. Um, the weather this weekend is expected to be nice. Uh, the beach um, is beautiful. We have a lot of beach right now. It's a beautiful time to still get out to the beach. It's hot, so you're going to want to stay hydrated. Um, we're looking at late afternoon, uh, 5 and 6 p.m. high tides this, this weekend, so driving shouldn't really be an issue. Rip currents are definitely still a threat, and there are some jellyfish starting to wash ashore. Uh, but there's also a lot of other things happening on the beach, and, and we're lucky today to have uh, Jessica Fentress, the coastal director, and Niall Sazitsky, the activity project manager for coastal as well, um, in the studio. How are, y'all, how are y'all doing today? You, you hit the nail on the head. It is now local season. The kids are back in school. Our winter friends have not made their way down here yet. It is time to get on the beach, enjoy your beach, enjoy that sunshine, and get some vitamin D. Niles, how about you? Appreciate you having us here, Dave. We're uh, we're happy to talk about some progress we've made on the beach, some progress, some some plans for the future, and you know, um, this year sea turtle nesting season um, was the most successful they've ever had, while um, still constructing on the beach. One of the first years I've you know one of the first times I've ever heard of construction occurring during sea turtle nesting season. So we usually ramp up with construction in November with the conclusion of sea turtle nesting season. Um, We still have plans to start a whole lot of projects um, this off season, as we call it. Um, Also because there's just less folks on the beach. So we're looking forward to having a big end to 2023 to kick off a whole lot of construction projects. And um, folks are gonna see a lot of action on the beach here soon. And I can't believe I forgot to, to mention the, the record-breaking sea turtle nesting season. I think yesterday we were at 1,493 nests, with, which is absolutely amazing. I remember uh, last year we, we, it was, we had another record-setting season, right. and then the hurricanes came through, and it devastated our coastline. There were still some nests on the beach. Um, and it was like a sad story. We were kind of worried about how this year was going to turn out. So for residents, what we can do to help out is keep the beach clean, dark and flat, flat and sand castles. Take your trash with you when you leave the beach or throw it in the trash cans. Take the toys with you. Um, don't use flashlights at the night or uh, on the beach at night. And uh, yeah, just let them do their thing. If you do see one, keep your distance. Don't harass it. Um, it's, it's an amazing thing uh, to see. We've had you you all both on the show a lot uh following the hurricanes i think four or five times talking about uh coastal recovery because it's a big deal it it affects a lot of residents and visitors alike um for for those who might be tuning in and and not really know how far we've come or or where we started at can we just give like maybe a two minute rundown from like hurricanes hit to where we are today i know that's going to be hard because the amount of effort and work that's gone into it but Give it a shot. So we've made significant progress, not only in what you see on the beach with removing debris. We, how much debris did we pull out? Um, I think over 12,000 cubic yards of debris, and that's concrete debris. 
right? The first pass we do, we take all the floating, you know, construction debris. That's timber, usually dune walkovers, pieces of the pier, vegetation, trees, et cetera, stuff like that. Then on our on kind of what we call our second pass in front of our trap bag program, we removed over 12,000 cubic yards of concrete rubble and debris. That's broken seawalls, you know, old concrete stairs, all types of stuff like that. And then behind that, um, the county has installed almost over 40,000 linear feet of the trap bag system. Those are the big black bags you see on the beach. They're full of sand. Um, there's usually two uh, two rows of them. And so we, we, you know, we've provided protection for over 300 properties um, within amazing. the county, and that, and that most of that's private properties um, that had no protection after the storms. And maybe didn't have the means to build a temporary seawall or pile up a large quantity of temporary sand or install their own trap bags. Some of the trap bags are installed privately. But uh, the county took on uh, the initiative to try and help some folks that, that, that couldn't help themselves. And um, we're just wrapping up our, prop, our, our project. And like I said, you know, installed over 40,000 linear feet, you know, and have protected over 300 properties. So... We're so, proud of it. No, this is amazing work. Uh, I'm over here wondering, you say 12,000 cubic yards, and I'm like, well, how much is that? Like, what is that? Like a football field stack 30 feet Yeah, high? you know, you think a, a truck has maybe, um, you know, 15 to 18 cubic yards. Like a semi-dump truck? A, a dump truck. Okay. So, you know, you're thinking. Do the math, Niles. Yeah. <laughs> 10,000 of those trucks, you know, or something like that. That's insane. That's absolutely insane. Yeah. So pretty wild. So on that trap bags, I still see them on the beach. They're not as, uh, they're not as, I don't see as many of them as I, I did. Like I can see the progress being made. What's the purpose of the trap bag? Is that just temporary protection or, or what's the purpose of the trap bag? How do those work? So the trap bags are not to protect you from a hurricane. They're basically to give the upland property owners a buffer during uh, tides of significance, so like full moon tides, if the wind's blowing, they got them through a lot of our nor'easters that we had this off season. But it also provides the material that they can then use when they do their seawall repair or they do their rock revetment installation. They can use that material to offset their costs for backfill or front fill in front of the dune line. Um, we are we're working on a larger sand project, and you may see some of these trap bags stay until 2025. When we come through and do the larger sand project, by permit, we're going to be required to come through and remove the trap bags in order to place sand in front of the property. So they're going to be here a while. Uh, we were out in the area of uh, Frank Grandin Park on the beach yesterday, day before yesterday. And if you notice, the trap bags are starting to get buried. And then with the vegetation we received a couple of months ago, the beach is starting to revegetate itself, which is is massive progress you know the beach will naturally recover itself it's just it won't be as fast or and it won't look immediately like what you imagine the beach would look like prior to the storms so we're starting to gain sand a lot of our sand we lost over six million cubic yards of sand through both hurricane events it didn't all go away it kind of some of it went in the inlet and we're addressing that but a lot of it went just offshore into some sandbars um we had pretty epic surf a couple of months ago. It was fantastic everywhere. Places that never had a break now had a break. You look out in the middle of Daytona and you go, where the hell did that thing come from? And now as we start progressing into the end of summer, we start getting our longer days and our cooler waves. Um, this, the sandbars are making their way back onto the beach as the berm. So you may have soft driving in some areas. That's the sand making its way back. It just hasn't hit the dune line yet. The hope is that we can skate through this hurricane season and the progress that we've made on our sand accretion will go from the soft driving lanes all the way up to our seawalls and start creating the dune line. And then, you know, I, I know the sargasm freaks everybody out, but I am praying for some sargasm because that brings the organic material and the seeds to revegetate our coastline naturally and complementary to Mother Nature. Yeah, and, and we were I was down there with you the other day and uh, you were it's called beach rack, correct? Yeah, beach rack. rack. And, and you were super excited about the beach rack. And, and there was, there was vegetation popping 
out from all around where the sarcasm has started to decompose because it brings with it the seeds, it brings with it the, the biological life that can be brought onto our shores and those roots go down and help kind of uh, secure everything. But I remember there was a flower popping up and you're like, there's a pollinator and there's a bee flying around it and you were just so pumped. Um, it just really, what came through to me was just how passionate you are about recovery and, and looking at all these different uh, solutions and, and it's a dynamic environment, right? Like when we talk about uh, construction on the beach i don't i don't know if a lot of people take into account how how much it changes and how many different factors have to be taken into consideration i think on a resident lev level maybe somebody traveling to the beach uh you're headed down to the beach and let's say it's it's four by four only and you can't get on a, a beach ramp and that kind of you're kind of bummed out you know and and you might go to another ramp and find somewhere that has the hard pack sand and get on the beach but in reality, that soft sand is because our the sand is being accreted back on our beaches, which is actually super beneficial in, in the broad uh, scope of things. Um, and that's just one thing. Like I'm, you know that, and I know that from knowing you. You know that it, it is actually a good thing. But can you talk a little bit about the, the some of the challenges you face while working on the beach? Another example. I'm sorry. Another example is the posts, right? So you said we're gaining sand. You look at the post, all those, I don't even know how many posts we have down the beach. The conservation zone posts. Conservation yeah. zone posts. Those are getting buried too. So what is it, two foot, three foot of sand we have now back on our beach? We've we've gotten some areas. Orman has recovered very well. Um, Daytona Beach Shores is still a little up. New Smyrna is doing a fantastic job. But, you know, we have to go through and lift those posts so they're visible again. We have to lift the trash cans higher so that they don't become an impedance to turtles. We still have turtles nesting. Um, so, you know, we, we maintain our beach, seeing the sand come not only helps us with having more active recreation area, but that's the reason that we're, we're getting so many successful turtle nests during this season. When we, we were wondering, you know, it, it, you asked us in December and January and the low tide was two or three feet from the seawall. And we're like, how are these turtles going to nest? There's nowhere for them to go. Well, Mother Nature is, you know, repairing her beaches and she's she's putting the sand back on the beach and giving these turtles an opportunity to, uh, you know, have a successful hatch. And so on even on like a bigger scale. So we got we got the jetty, right? We opened 75 foot of the jetty connector, which if, if you remember in the past, it's a big wooden walkway that leads out to the jetty. It was absolutely destroyed during the last set of hurricanes that got fixed and we got 75 foot of the jetty open. We're a year out and the, and the jetty, the railing's still missing on the jetty. Just somebody, a, a resident or somebody might be like, why isn't this getting done? Can you, but there's a lot more that goes into a fix like that, correct? Like these parts aren't just easily accessible. Like the, the railing, for example, tell me how, how the sourcing works and then are there any custom modifications that need to be made to some of these materials we need to fix these, these structures? So we have to abide by FEMA, um, and FEMA is, they're an excellent partner, but they are not fast. So it, you also are looking at about $40,000 worth of aluminum speed rail. Uh, it's very similar to like plumbing PVC pipe and joints, the way you fit them together, only you screw them together. But that is a high volume amount of metal that we had to procure. Um, and the original jetty was built, you know, decades ago, and the exact fasteners that we had previously, you cannot find them. So once we got the railing in, we had to send it to our road and bridge department to basically thread some additional holes through the fasteners that go onto the concrete. So every one of those little plates, we had to re-drill holes onto. Um, Niles is working with one of our general contractors. It's a local guy, great firm. And they are prepping a proposal to come out, do some concrete patching, and then uh, basically it's going to be like Lincoln Logs. They're just going to have to start compiling the pieces back together, zipping in the connections, and um, it's going to be dirty work because they're going to be drilling straight into concrete. But we're, we're hoping to start making some progress in the next month or so. Did yeah. you have an exact date? I don't. Um, it's... Just like everything right now, it's hard to get parts. It's just been a quite a process with this particular type of railing, you know, and that railing has served us really well out there. So we didn't want to go with something new. Um, it's amazing how that stuff has been so resilient. I mean, how many storms have we had that the surge is over the jetty and just beating up that railing. And unless we get hit by, you know, an, an actual piling or something hits the railing, it seems to survive all these storm events. And it's done a really good job. So 
we've been really happy with it, but we had some procurement issues, like like Jessica said, and with getting the exact parts. So it's been quite a process, and we're looking to get that going. And then we're looking to uh, extend the jetty deck, the concrete jetty deck. We're gonna extend that west so that we don't have that timber, what we call jetty connector anymore, between the boardwalk and the jetty. We have more concrete, which is will provide more recreational uh, area. It'll be a better fishing platform back west a little bit. Um, and hopefully we'll have an area that can act as the jetty deck does now, where when you have a storm surge, it just kind of flows over okay, and, and, and won't wash out that timber structure every time. I mean, we, we lose that jetty connector. It's just the nature of the way erosion is. It's the way Ponce Inlet is nowadays. We lose it in Northeasters, mm -hmm. you know, even kind of minor ones. Um, unfortunately, it's just, it's, we do have a lot of loss of sand and there's plenty of loss of sand in Ponce Inlet um, and next to the jetty. So that little corner there has become pretty susceptible um, to erosion in any Northeaster nowadays, right? All right. Um, some significant damage from the hurricanes to our CT tower, the lifeguard, the large mm -hmm. lifeguard observation tower there. And like I said, um, the jetty connector completely wiped out again. Wow, we had a con or we have a staff member that's been with us. I don't know how long Bruce has been here, a dozen years. He's rebuilt it himself seven or eight times mm -hmm. and said, I'll never do it again. Can't wait for a new project. So um, he'll be smiling about it. Um, but that construction on that probably in another year something like that um the extension the, right the, this the, the extension part right uh army corps wants to review the plan see what we're doing on their jetty you know mm -hmm. that, a lot of it, it, it takes it takes time all this stuff takes a lot of time um just working through the process working through the processes the leases the the little you know the minutiae that is kind of government there's always a lot of little pieces that you have to put together to finally to finally move forward all right so we got the materials we got our approval we're scheduling a project i think we're i think we'll start working on it here this fall well even when it comes to scheduling like tell me about some of the, well, the you know, challenges working, of scheduling that's right working on the beach just because we say okay go tomorrow doesn't mean you won't have a northeaster that's washing over that the jetty deck and they can't run their equipment out there or even set a generator out there with the risk of it getting, you know, inundated by salt. Or concrete salt, and, right. and th I mean, afternoon thunderstorms. Anything on the beach is tough. I mean, we had a great calm summer, but we had a ton of thunderstorms and it affected all the all the contractors on the beach. It affected contractors throughout Volusia County, right? If you're working on a roof and here comes the afternoon, you know, uh, thunderstorm at, you know, 3 p.m., could throw it's just part of Florida, you know? Yeah. But the coast is especially significant because you have the tide thing. We had such a deflated beach that any high tide made it almost the beach unusable. Um, the type of equipment you want to use on the beach, you know, is expensive. You're trying to not get it inundated with salt water on yep. a daily basis. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, that's just another, the tide and the, the you know, the deflated beach. We didn't have a lot of swell, but we had enough to interrupt guys for decent length of time. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a grind. It's just a slow, just keep the train moving. It's not always a, you know, a fast train. It's just to keep it moving forward. And that's what we're here to do. We were supposed to have a concrete truck at the 27th Avenue ramp this afternoon to put concrete behind one of our seawalls. And we had to cancel it because with this little swell bump we've got out there right now on the tide cycles, we, we just can't risk putting the, the concrete truck in the wet. So that's been postponed. Right. And we, we actually sent that out on social media yesterday and had to put postponed on that. And that's that's what I kind of wanted to get to with like the challenges of the in environment. It's ever changing. We would love to say an exact timeline, but you really can't on the beach because you one day is different from the next day, which is different from the next day. And you have to be conscious and you have to be knowledgeable, all these factors uh, that that go into it. Um, it's and we even just, tougher that typically we're building in the winter, right? Mm -hmm. Outside of sea turtle nesting season. Mm -hmm. And as everyone knows, you know, you wake up each morning in Florida, you never know what it's going to look like on the beach, northeaster swell events, et cetera, you know. So um, a, lot of, a lot of stuff for contractors to deal with on a daily basis out there. It's hard enough to build stuff, you know, repair stuff. 
But feel, then when you got the beach, it's really tough. I feel like time's flying by. Uh, let's go to our successes, right? So the goal after the hurricanes was to get beach access back open, get our private, help our private properties where we could to help them get secured, secure our assets. Where are we at with beach access? We have every single park open with the exception of Frank Renda. That's or, I'm sorry, with the exception of Edwin Peck Park. We are getting ready to finish up our trap bag programs. And it it's not, we could not consciously pull our trap bag crews away from our private property owners and work on a county asset because we're right in the middle of hurricane season. The, mm-hmm. the Gulf and Atlantic's lit up like a Christmas tree right now. So once we finish with our trap bag installs, we're going to put a lot of effort towards Peck Park to try and restabilize the eastern end where we lost the seawall and the bathroom was compromised. Luckily, the bathroom's on deep piling, so we're not worried about that. But if we can get the shoreline stabilized, we're probably going to go three high on the trap bags there. We're going to put a lot of backfill in. We'll be able to open Peck Park maybe by the end of the year. Uh Um, Once we can do that, then we're going to have all of our parks open. We still have about 30 walkovers that are going to be closed. Unfortunately, you know, ADA dune walkovers, those ramps that everybody loves to ride their bikes and take their fishing gear down, um, they're like a magnet for storm damage. Mm -hmm. They're just so big and it's connected and there's no flow through. So what these waves do is these waves kind of lift and twist these things. Um, our trades workers are fantastic. They work their butt off through, you know, 100 degree temperatures and everything. And they've made a lot of progress. But rebuilding back the ADA ramps is something that we're just not capable of doing in house because of the permitting and the design requirements. Uh, we figured out the stairs very good and we have built a lot of stairs in the last year. Um, Give us some patience on the ADA ramps. If you do need uh, physical accommodations, you can always get complimentary access onto the beach, beach driving, and at our two inlet parks as well. Um, but we're we're actually hindsight looking backward. If you'd have thought me, if you'd have asked me two days after Nicole, how long is it going to take to recover? I would have laughed at you and said we're not going to have these walkovers. Walk over, walkovers open for like three years. Yeah, and and I'm a resident. I use the beach a lot. Like I'm always down at the beach and I. I, you guys are like in the minutia. You're down in there, and I appreciate how there, in all your communication and how you're talking, there is so much work to do. But as a resident, somebody who visits the beach, I appreciate all y'all have done to give me access, my family access, and options to the beach. It's been amazing. It was frustrating there for a long time. You know, well, the heroes are really uh, some of the county trades workers. All right, they've rebuilt. Uh, you know, over, over seventy, over hundred, yeah, over a hundred dune walkovers. Um, like Jessica said, the the ADA, the large ADA switchback ramps are are beyond them. So that's a slower process with engineering, permitting, bidding, and bringing in contractors. So we, we appreciate everyone's patience on those. But yeah, the superstars have been our you know our county trades workers have gotten so many of those stairs, you know that mean so much to to folks you know back back in order, and um, and the private contractors. I mean you know there's a they're working hard every day you know um it's it's been nice to see so many folks throughout florida and the southeast show up to help these private properties get reestablished. a lot of great seawall work going on out there and a lot more to be done thank you all very much we're going to take a quick break we pretty much just burned through all of our time it went by so quick i got 100 more million questions big projects in the future and all that hopefully we can get you back in the studio but we're going to break real quick and we'll be back with more volusia today Subscribe to the Volusia County YouTube channel. And hit the bell icon to know what's happening in your hometown. There are so many great places to explore. And things to learn. With over 1,000 videos available right now, the channel offers something for everyone. Let's go! Did you know we have countless features showcasing history, nature, wildlife, and recreation? Subscribe! and hit the bell icon. Or that we live stream important county meetings and workshops where leaders make decisions that can impact our everyday lives. Did you subscribe yet? Or that we record our weekly radio show, Volusia Today, where we interview staff from the different divisions and departments across our great county, and they discuss the nitty gritty of their field and expertise. Go ahead, subscribe. But that's not it, there's more. Subscribe and hit the bell icon and fully explore. Score. We're back. We have Niall Szyzycki and Jessica Fincher in the studio with 
the county's coastal division, everything beach, beach construction, beach repair, all that good stuff. We don't have much time left. Jessica, what do we need to know? We got some big sand projects coming. Uh, you will start seeing public meetings for the sand projects. We are going to start a massive easement acquisition. First priority is going to be every single beachfront property from Sapphire and New Smyrna all the way down to the rocks in Bethune. Um, keep 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 posted to our social media you will get a direct mailing but please come please ask questions we just want to put a big old sand berm in front of your property i just need an easement to do it that sounds amazing so is that information out there yet or is that coming soon we're prepping the language now once we finalize the easements and get a visual for it then it's hopefully going to be in the next couple of months that's good that sounds absolutely amazing we'll definitely keep you posted and as uh Jessica said, definitely follow our social media chan channels, County of Volusia, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all those. Niles, you got 30 seconds. What do we need to know? A lot of big stuff in the works. Looking forward to, to helping folks even more than we already have. Like Jessica said, pay attention to the easement requests. Show up at the public meetings. Ask good questions. Tell your neighbors. Tell your friends. We need an easement to put sand behind your house. Well, I just want to say thank you all for everything you do. I've been working with you all closely. Um, and what you do is absolutely so technical and it's so big and it's it's a lot. Like you have worked extremely hard over the last year. So I appreciate it. I'm sure our residents appreciate it. I'm sure our visitors appreciate it. They might not know, not know who to thank, but uh, it's, it's you all. So have a great weekend. Download the Volusia Beaches app for all current beach access information and uh, enjoy Volusia County. If you have a comment about Volusia today, or if there is a topic you would like to hear featured, please contact Volusia County Community Information at 